How are we doing, Seattle? You know, I work on energy, so uh, I'll ask you this question again. How are you doing, Seattle? Not so good. Okay, one more time. I work on energy, okay? How are you doing, Seattle? So I just taught you sentiment analysis. So uh, my name is Nitin Bhatt, like uh, uh, my friend Brad here said. The reason why this is important is uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning is the new oil of the century. And I want to play a video for you guys. Uh, before I go to the video, anyone of you know this guy? Mark Cuban. Why is Mark Cuban famous? He's a billionaire. Any other, any other answers? Did anyone say Shark Tank? All right. So let's hear what he has to say. OK. OK. The demo obviously failed. Anyways, so what Mark is really trying to say is um, artificial intelligence and machine learning are the building blocks of the future. If you don't learn this in the next three years, you will become a dinosaur. Hey, who wants to be a dinosaur here? Anyone? Nobody, right? So that's the reason what we, what we want to do today in this session. It's a really big topic and a uh, lot of use cases of frameworks and things. What I have tried to set this up is, in context of product manager, why is it important? Why is it important for you as a product manager? How does it help you to solve customer problems? How does it help you to get revenue for your products? And how does it help you to save, uh, improve your bottom line for your company? So that's what the talk is going to focus on. I'm not going deep into frameworks or uh, anything, any discussions between Keras and uh, uh, TensorFlow. Let's, let's see uh, how ML and AI exist in our world today. Um, how many of you have iPhones here? Raise your hands, please. All right, 30, 40%. Do you know uh, there is a lot of AI ML actually built into your iPhone? And it's built in through the Photos app. So if you go to the Photos app, it actually categorizes people and photos. So the, the ability for your iPhone Photos app to actually identify who are the people uh, is a classification. That is one form of machine learning. Let's take another example. How many of you use Airbnb? A lot of, lot of you use Airbnb. So when you actually try to search something in Airbnb for a particular neighborhood, because you want to go for a vacation or experience, the ability for, to search for a one particular neighborhood in Airbnb is in one form, of, in one form clustering. So that's how it actually uh, decides uh, to build the right experience for you. Let's take another example. Google, when you try to search something on Google and it gives you the answers to your query, that is clustering. Uh, that, that, I'm sorry, that is uh, ranking. The fourth one is, uh, uh, Give was here early morning today, he was talking about Netflix. A lot of you must have seen this use case in Netflix, the ability for Netflix to predict what are you going to watch next, right? So how does that, how does Netflix build that? So Netflix knows about you, it knows about your profiles, it knows about your taste, it knows about what particular episodes of House of Cards you have watched, and how many people like you have actually watched seasons of a certain type. So that is how a recommendation system is built. And the reason I'm giving you these examples, and uh, to illustrate the point that artificial intelligence and machine learning is not new, it is not discovered yesterday. So this has been in existence for a very long period of time. And the last one is, um, how many of you use Zillow here? All right, Zillow. Rob, great product by Zillow, Zestimate. The ability for uh, uh, the calculator to predict what the price of the house is, what you're trying to buy is, all, is a regression. So we'll get into these terms and what does each one of these algorithms mean. I just wanted to tie it together with the use cases, all right? Now let's get to what is AI. What I'm going, I'm not going to give you the textbook definition. I just want to give you some things which is easy. The biggest takeaways from today's talk is a lot of these concepts would be explained in much easy, simple terms. I'm not going to give you the geek answers for any one of them. I just want to give you answers which you can understand in simple terms. What artificial intelligence is, it is machines trying to mimic human behavior. So the first example I did with all of you, I tried to ask you, how are you doing Seattle? And you responded a certain way. 
So this is human intelligence. Based on what I gauge from you, I'm asking you the next set of questions. So if I was replaced by a machine, which is difficult to do, but yeah, anyways. But if I was replaced by a machine and machine could do the same, that would be artificial intelligence, all right? So how is all this connected? Because a lot of confusion comes from, you get a lot of these buzzwords thrown, oh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, artificial neural networks. It is so confusing when you're a product manager and you're not from a data science background. So looking at the holistic picture, artificial intelligence is machines trying to mimic human behavior, so that is one. And the forms of artificial intelligence at a high level is robotics. Um, have any one of you seen Temi? Temi? The, or you have seen this Boston uh, Dynamics, there is a robot trying to, any one of you seen that? You should check it out. So that is when the robots are actually mimicking hum, human behavior. So they are at the cusp of even behaving emotion. So that is one example of robotics. The second example is natural language processing. So one of the areas which I was talking to you about was sentiment analysis. Based on your reactions and three reactions, I was able to gauge, you know, when the first time you started, you know, you were kind of lukewarm, you were not so excited, but the third one you were really very excited, or you pretended to be excited. So the point is, that is what natural language processing is, and there are a lot of branches of science associated with that. And the third one is really neural networks. I'll not get into details of neural networks, we'll need to three hour class for that. So just to give you an idea, so these are the examples of artificial intelligence. Let's come to what is machine learning. Now machine learning is mostly um, it is pattern recognition. It is machine learning is pattern recognition. It is a branch of artificial intelligence, or in simple terms, one of the ways you can achieve artificial intelligence is machine learning is a bunch of algorithms through which you can achieve uh, uh, you know, a brilliance in artificial intelligence. So that is one example. And what are the examples of artificial intelligence? Uh, uh, there are multiple types of algorithms I talked in my previous example. We talked about classification. Uh, we talked about recommendation systems. So that is what machine learning is. At a high level, these are a bunch of algorithms which are very good at pattern recognition and they understand things from the data and the environment. So that is one thing you want to keep in mind. I want to talk in the first section of my talk about artificial intelligence, we will go into area, areas of artificial intelligence, and in the second half, we will cover uh, machine learning. The first one with artificial intelligence, uh, there are five, six areas, there are multiple, I just, just for the sake of this talk, I've kind of kept it to first five, six. The most interesting one for me personally was computer vision. So I created a company last year uh, for uh, detecting intrusion and the, the, the area of artificial intelligence I used was computer vision. Now what does computer vision really mean? Remember, artificial intelligence was machine mimicking human behavior. So I am right now as a human, I'm seeing close to 800,000 people. When the machine sees the same uh, you know, ability to identify 800,000 people, that would be artificial intelligence. And the set of technologies through which this can be built would be computer vision. And there are multiple areas in computer vision. Uh, there is one area called object detection. The picture of this gentleman you see, uh, he has been identified as an intruder. So uh, it's this, this is a dummy, I'm not an intruder, so just, just wanted to make a point here, right? Uh, another example, this was uh, uh, my co-founder, Megan, is also here. So uh, uh, this is something we built last year. So the picture, what you see is, uh, this is through computer vision, we were able to detect uh, some heuristics about this person, the age, the, we, could, we could determine ethnicity, we could also determine whether an Amazon package was stolen or not. So that was the use case behind it. So these are examples of computer vision object detection. I want to talk about a couple of more examples. Uh, so you could also do uh, you know, change objects, object transformation. And one example is, do you see these two celebrities? They're actually not real celebrities, these are fake. They were generated through a number. So an algorithm actually generated that. So as you get into product management, you will see a lot of these. The, one of the areas which is hot around artificial intelligence is fake news, fake videos, or fake images. So that is one area of impact, whether you are in retail or whether you are in any, any, any of the area of business, that is something which will affect you tremendously. So that is, uh, that is things about image transformation. 
Another area I really wanted to cover was um, natural language processing. We learned about sentiment analysis. I'll do a demo of that very quickly. Other than sentiment analysis, um, uh, there is one more example I wanted to talk about was uh, language or machine translation. The ability to turn from, if you are saying something in English, it can be syntactically and semantically translated correctly into Spanish. That is a very hard problem to solve, and Google has done a great job with that. So that is another area of artificial intelligence, which obviously is powered by machine learning. That is one area of artificial intelligence which is of tremendous use these days. The other two examples, very quickly, is time series. How many of you buy stocks? Show of hands. All right, so never trust the stock forecaster because there are still problems with that. So the area of artificial intelligence, uh, which takes data historically, takes a lot of these signals. Say, for example, I want to predict uh, uh, stock price for Tesla tomorrow. It's very hard problem for me to figure out just based on history what has happened in the past because there are signals around uh, tomorrow maybe the federal government changed the interest rates or maybe they uh, you know create barriers for export so it can really change the stock price but the branch of artificial intelligence which deals with future predictions is time series and the last one is graph analysis i talked about the netflix example of ability for netflix to predict what is the movie you're going to watch, that would be under a graph analysis. So enough of theory, let's do some uh, exercises, right? So I'm going to present you some text, and this is powered by uh, my friends at NLTK, Python-based API, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to go into the coding exercise. I'm going to actually show you a text, and I'm going to ask you, uh, we have power of humanity, crowdsourcing, right? And let's see how you do against the machine. So there is this text, uh, I'm claiming to be an actor, and I'm thrilled to be nominated for Oscar Award, right? That's a big deal, right? So if you can give me a quick sense of what do you think this text is? Is it positive or negative? All of, the, all of you think it's positive? All right. So another question. If you have to rank it from 0 to 1 in sense of probability, how much, how much probability do you think it's positive? 0.8, 80% positive, 90%, 20%? Throw me a number. 0.9, someone said 90%. Let's see what the machine says. 60%. So what it actually does, this algorithm actually does, is first it checks whether the text is neutral or not. And if the text is not neutral, it actually does a polarity check, that how much of this is positive and how much of this is negative. So the machine thinks it's 60% positive and 40% negative. So I'll talk about the bias in a quick minute. I just wanted to illustrate what sentiment analysis can do. Let's do one more example, all right? Try to, try to beat the machine this time, all right? What do you think about this? This is, this is real me. I'm not, a, I'm not fake here. That's why this is real me. I'm really excited to present our product school. I'm just concerned with lack of time to deep dive. What? 0.5. Any answers from that side? 0.6, 60% positive. Let's see what the machine says. 30% positive, 70% negative. Now, I can get into semantics of why this, uh, you know, why the algorithm made this decision. Keep in mind, it also understands the context in which you have written it, or uh, so, which I have hidden from, from this demo is, in what context did I write it? A lot of time people write something with sarcastically, right? So the you know, you'll be really very surprised these APIs are at such level of maturity it understands if you're writing something in humor or tongue in cheek, all right? So we'll do one more exercise. This is around computer vision. This is my picture I have put, and I didn't run the demo exactly, but I got some heuristics based from computer vision artificial intelligence about me. First thing, it says I'm age 32, 60% confidence. How many of you believe that? All of you believe that I'm 25, right? No, I'm not 32, obviously. So, you know, it's absolutely, you know, there is some debate on that. Attractive. It, it doesn't think I'm attractive. 70%. Would you believe that? It's wrong. I don't want to believe it. I'm, I'm an attractive guy. Good looking, yeah. Anyways. So, let's look at the third one. Blonde hair, no. 98% precision. Remember, this example is about finding my ethnicity as well. Based on my color of my hair, it's able to predict, hey, you don't have blonde hair, you might not be a Caucasian, right? Another example, expression smile, gender male, 75%, race white, 
Now, look at this contradiction, right? Now, there could be, I could be a form of why I'm, I'm not getting into debate of what the racial uh, pro profile, like how the racial structure is. But I'm just telling you, this is such a powerful API. And a lot of these things, I have hidden them because it is a lot of personal information about me, right? The reason I wanted to bring this up to this audience is, as product managers, you are the custodians of data. If there is anything you want to get from this talk, even if you don't get anything I say, get this. You are a custodian of data. So privacy of your customer's data, how you protect it, and what are the things the technology is enabling you to do is paramount. So please do this thing very carefully. Uh, one of my colleagues, Riya Shankar, is talking later in the day about data analytics, and she has a really good course also at Product School around ethics. I would highly encourage you to either come to her cohort or mine. So this is one example. And the last one, I, I was personally very hurt by this. It said young, just 30% confidence that I'm young. Just see the contradiction. It said my age is 32, which probably I should be young, right? So just see the biases in this algorithm itself. So I'm not called out what particular algorithm I've used here. So this is kind of an upcoming area of science in this. So you realize the kind of challenges we are facing in artificial intelligence. So the key thing for you to remember is, if you're a budding product manager, if you're an aspiring product manager, you're a seasoned product manager, it is your duty. You are custodian of customer data, period. That, and that's what you should be. Raise that bar. Be the ethical person. You know, use AI with ethics is a very strong thing. So use it properly. All right. So, so that concludes the section of artificial intelligence. And I'll try to, I'm between you and lunch, so I'll try to wrap this up fast on machine learning. Remember machine learning, I had talked. This is area of artificial intelligence. Um, this is algorithms learning on data and execution. And this is really pattern recognition. Where can you use machine learning? Uh, the use cases are you can use this in fraud detection. Has anyone have seen this use case? You have a credit card here, and you're trying flying out somewhere to some foreign country. Within some time, your credit card company calls you saying, hey, is this a valid transaction or get a text? Has anyone of you seen that? Right? Yeah, that is example powered by machine learning, right? So um, two key things, again, big takeaways from this. Uh, where do you want to use machine learning? Number one, you want to use machine learning when you cannot scale. Example is, if you are responsible for a piece of product which makes a decision whether an email is spam or not, you cannot do it through a traditional programming or through human. It is hundreds and thousands and millions and billions of these data points. So that is where you require machine learning, all right? The second one is, how machine learning is different than traditional programming is, traditional programming is everything is understood. I know the inputs. I know the logic. Say, for example, I want to add two integers. I will give two inputs. I know the math is C equal to A plus B. I know the output, traditional programming. Machine learning really doesn't work like that. So if you have to give an example of doing credit card frauds, that is where you would use it, where the inputs and outputs really are not very well defined. Because a fraud in the United States might be different than fraud in India. And it becomes really interesting when the credit card issued and the country where the card was used are different, right? And there are so many factors, age of the person, and there are so many, so many, it's such a vast science. So the example I really want to give is that's where machine learning is actually used. So very quickly, I will just cover through five use cases. I have a small demo at the end. I'll try to make sure that we go through the demo. Now, this is five classic algorithms in machine learning you want to learn as a product manager, as a technologist. And technologist doesn't mean you have to program. You have to code. You have to understand where to use and in what context. right? So the first one is um, the classification problem. Remember, I was talking to you about email spam. If an email has come, whether it is spam or not, that is a classification problem, right? That's where it is used. Uh, another one is whether the customer is going to use the product or not. That is where you would use this algorithm. And there are times you may not have two choices. You might actually have three choices. Say, for example, a customer is trying to search Titanic on Google. Titanic is a movie. Titanic could be a book. Titanic could be a range of fashion launched by some major fashion designer, right? So then the kind of things, it's almost A or B or C. So it's almost like a multi-class classification, right? Clear? All right. So we move on to the next one. 
This is regression. Now, regression uh, is something you use to predict. Say, for example, I want to predict what the temperature is tomorrow in Seattle. How many of you use the weather app? Right? So weather app uses a lot of regression algorithms. So in order to figure out if the weather in Seattle today is 72, based on some historical patterns, it can actually predict the weather in Seattle tomorrow, the patterns and other things. So regression really is, if you see this line, that is where the expected behavior is. And anything which is off that is called a regression. It's a linear algebra, right? So another one is, what is the price for this particular house. So the house has been priced at a certain thing, and the regression would be the change in the price of the house based on regression algorithm, right? The third one is anomaly detection. This is a really, really powerful algorithm. And if you are working in a company like Amazon, e-commerce space, anything to do with customers um, or building payment systems, this is really important. So whenever you have such kind of things, you would build some kind of uh, abuse and a fraud system. That is where anomaly detection is really, really powerful. What do you see from this picture? What, what can you figure out from this picture? Bunch of fishes, blue fishes, and there is just one fish which is red in the opposite direction. Sounds like an anomaly, right? So that is what this algorithm is really good at, predicting problems like this and flagging it, saying this kind of doesn't look right. So this could be used in credit card uh, fraud, uh, fraud cases. But this is a very powerful one. You, you should really know where to apply this. And again, the pieces around how you actually come to that conclusion, whether a particular uh, transaction is fraudulent or not, is very important. The last two examples, so the first three ones were the supervised learning, where all the data is actually set. The second core example is unsupervised data, where uh, it's almost like unsupervised you have a lot of data, but you haven't really uh, clustered it really well. Now, what you see in this picture is there are five cartoon characters. Um, there is a Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, um, I think it's Uncle Scrooge, Minnie. I, I don't remember the fifth one. Now, what it actually did, it actually created uh, clusters for me into three areas. So what it actually did, it created a separate category for Mickey Mouse. And the three ducks, Donald Duck, I think there is one is Uncle Scrooge, and the third one I don't remember. And the third one is Bugs Bunny. So what it actually did is, based on inputs it was actually getting, it kind of created these clusters or segments. How many of you deal with customers or segments? This is the algorithm. This is the line of, uh, line of machine learning you would really want to learn. Uh, the last example in this is, uh, I was talking to you about the recommendation systems in Netflix. So Netflix has some kind of a profile associated with you. It says, OK, you know, you are very fond of watching classics. And based on what your profile is, it also sees what are the other users of the same type, and it shows them the same data. The last example in this is uh, reinforcement learning. If you are working in a company like Lyft, um, you are working in a company like Uber, autonomous vehicle decisions, where the, the, the entity actually has to make decision on its own, like whether to take a right turn or stop at a yellow light or whatever. So that would be reinforcement learning. The ability to do what to do next, that is really reinforcement learning. Or another example is if you have a, a robotic vacuum, the ability for the robotic vacuum to figure out whether to go next or stop, that is also reinforcement learning. So with this, I just really wanted to give you a recap of what artificial intelligence is, what machine learning is, where are the areas this, these are used? Obviously, this is a really vast area of uh, uh, technology and product. People have done their PhDs in this. So I would highly encourage you to explore this further. If you really want to beef up your skills, uh, you, know, you should definitely spend time on this. So last one, I talked about fraud detection. I had one quick example. Um, so a lot of times, people talk about models and training and things like that, right? It's very confusing. You don't even know what a model is, what input. Like It sometimes sounds rocket science to you, right? So I just wanted to make it really easy. So what I have done in this experiment is I have tried to create a learning experiment. So I did three actions. Action number one, I was raising my hand, and I trained the algorithm to learn with 30, 35 pictures, 34 pictures, saying, hey, this is how I actually raise my right raise my left hand. So that is action number one. Action number two, I stood still, and I 
taught the algorithm, they, this is how I stand still. And the third was actually I was catching my ear. So please, uh, this was shot in the night, so please excuse me for a bad picture. But the concept what I really wanted to share, the third one was I was holding my ear. So three different types of actions. I uploaded 30 to 40 pictures onto the model. So that is, which is input data. So I'm giving data for the algorithm to understand these, this is how I do these three actions. And once that was set, since the model was created, that's what the model would be. The last thing I did, I started waving my hand. And if you see what is in the input, it actually says with 81% confidence that the first set where I had actually held my hand, that kind of corresponds to that. So this is kind of a very, this is a very crude, I just wanted to make it really easy and simple for you to understand what a model is, what an input is, and what an output is. So with that, uh, I want to thank you, and uh, I hope you have a really good product con. We are really excited to do the first uh, product conference in Seattle. So have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.